What's going on guys, this is ETA Prime back here again. Today I finally received my GPD Win 2 and I want to take a look at this thing. There's been a lot of buzz about the Win 2 out there. I should have got a hold of one earlier but I really didn't want to fork out the cash. Now we're going to take a look at this, I'm going to go over the specs and then we're going to test some Steam games or PC games. I'm going to make a few other videos on this unit because it's really interesting. Definitely want to dive into a lot of emulation with this because in my opinion, this could very well be the best emulation portable out there. So if you take a look on Amazon, you can pick one of these up for $815. I know, that's why I didn't want to buy one in the first place. It's pretty expensive for what you're getting, but it's all about portability here. It's all about small components. The smaller you go, the more it costs. The base unit does come preloaded with a 128GB SSD. I upgraded to a 512, plus I threw a 256 gigabyte SD card in here because I want as much storage as possible. I've also ordered a very small 256 gigabyte USB 3.0 pen drive. So after it's all said and done, I'll be really close to one terabyte of storage on this thing. So around back here, we have six trigger buttons. These are gonna act as your mouse buttons, your left and right mouse click. It's also gonna act as your L1, L2, and L3. On the right hand side, R1, R2, and R3. USB Type-C for charging. It is using a quick charge system and they claim within 45 minutes you can bring it to 0 to 50% and then it's going to be kind of a slow charge there. We also get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a full-size USB 3.0 port, micro SD card slot, and a micro HDMI out in case you want to hook it up to an external monitor or television. The onboard controller layout is really awesome. It will take you a few playthroughs to get used to it. It shows up as X input. It's pretty much going to be recognized as an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller in applications. Right in the middle, there's a little mode switch. It'll switch between mouse mode and keyboard mode. So you can start up an application in mouse mode from your desktop, slide the switch over to game controller mode, and if the game supports game pads, it'll be detected as an X input controller. The gamepad feels great, you're going to have to get used to it because it's laid out in a weird orientation, but other than that I haven't had any trouble. Now we're going to go over the specs. For the CPU, we have an Intel Core M3 7Y30 at 1GHz, but it does turbo up to 2.6. This is a dual core CPU with 4 threads. The GPU is a built-in Intel HD615, it will boost up to 900MHz when needed. As for RAM, we get 8GB of LPDDR3 at 1866MHz. Now this is solder to the board, you cannot upgrade it. Like I mentioned, the storage can be upgraded, but it comes with a 128GB M.2 drive. It uses a 2242 M.2 SSD. We also have a micro SD card slot. Now I don't know the storage capacity on this. All I have is a 256GB card and it works fine. You can also use external storage using the USB 3.0 port. The screen itself looks amazing. Even though it's 720p because it's so condensed, it looks really, really good. Even if you put your games on low, which you will have to with higher end titles, it looks great for being a handheld. Uses a 6 inch 1280 by 720 H IPS display with 10 points of touch. It has some really good Wi-Fi built in. 802.11 AAC BGN plus Bluetooth 4.2. Now there's some other features in here. If you're really interested in every single spec that this thing has to offer, there is a Wikipedia page or you can go to their website. I'll leave links in the description. Now it's time to see how this thing performs because that's what I'm really interested in here. I'm going to be testing some PC games here and at the end I'm just going to run one emulator but expect more videos to come after this. If you have any requests, let me know in the comments below. Alright guys, so here it is. As you can see, I mean, it's not a super huge chunky unit. It's a little bigger than a normal like GPD XD. It's a little thicker than that. But overall it feels good in the hand. One thing I forgot to mention in the specs, the battery capacity on this is close to 9,800 milliamp hours. Depending on what you're doing with the unit, it will last anywhere from 2 hours to 6 hours. So if you're browsing the web, watching YouTube, you can get 6 hours out of it. If you're playing a very demanding game like GTA 5 that's just using as much CPU and GPU as possible, you're going to get 2 hours. I was originally just going to play it here in front of the camera for you, but what I'm going to do is set up my camera first. I'm going to hook an Xbox One controller up to it so I'm not moving the screen around while I'm trying to play some games. 
I do want you guys to get a feel for how good this tiny screen looks, even at 720p and low settings on some games. After I do this little demo here, I'm going to plug in my game capture to it. So we're not going to be messing around with the screen. It's going to be going directly to a 32-inch television being captured right out of the micro HDMI on the back. I'm not really sure how good it's going to look at 720p on a big screen, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. All right, so here we are. GTA 5, this is installed to my 512 gigabyte SSD. I do have frame lock on. I'm trying to get a constant 30 FPS out of this. We're on normal settings, which is pretty much low for GTA 5. It looks great on this little screen, and we're almost at a constant 30 FPS. Now, inside of houses and things like that, it will go up to 50, but in the open world, it does struggle a bit. It still amazes me to see this running natively on the GPD Win 2 at 30 FPS. Even if we're at 720p, this is pretty awesome. There's also some config files out there that you can download and some mods to install with GTA 5 to make it run better on a lower end system. I think if I went through here and messed around with it for a few hours, downloaded some packs, I could get at least 40 out of it. All right, so with that out of the way, I've connected my game capture card. That way we can see everything very clearly here. I'm at max performance, 98% battery. This is going to be running completely off a of battery for all of these tests here. I also have the resolution set at 720p because a lot of people are going to be plugging this into their TV to play their games. This is a handheld unit. I want to keep it as close as possible to the screen that's in the unit itself. I also want you to keep in mind that this is going to look a lot cleaner on the built-in screen. It's a very condensed 720p screen and it looks crystal clear. I can really see the difference here. I have this plugged into the micro HDMI on the GPD when it's connected to a 1080p Samsung television at 720p. Doesn't look as good as it does on the built-in screen. First game I want to test this way is GTA 5 once again. This is kind of advertised on all of the spec pages that I see. They claim it runs GTA 5 well. Now with the correct settings we can get a constant 30 FPS. I do have Afterburner running so up in the top left hand corner we can see the memory usage, the GPU usage, the RAM usage, and the FPS. I won't bore you with the settings in any other game, I just want to show you guys that I am set to the lowest we can go here. Going all the way down the list here, and even in advanced graphics I do have the scaling turned down just a bit, so we're not at 1 to 1 scale. Alright, so like this I do notice some heavy dips. What I'm going to do is go ahead and turn V-Sync on and bring the scaling down just a bit. We should get a pretty decent 30 FPS. Now we will notice some drops here and there. But overall, for a handheld device, this is pretty cool. I do want to come back to this game in a later video. I want to do some experimenting with some low-end PC mods for this thing. I know there's a ton of config files out there. Like I mentioned, this is stock, straight from Steam. I just turned the settings down a bit. Next up, we got Overwatch. 720p, all low settings, display scaling is set to 50%. I'm actually very impressed with this. Now you will notice some stutters in characters every once in a while. That's due to my internet connection right now. I've been having trouble all day. You'll notice a couple characters popping in and out. But overall, performance is great. Here we have Doom, all low settings, 
720p using the Vulcan API. The game's running really good for being on a handheld right now. You know I had to test out some Rocket League. All low settings, 720p. If you turn V-Sync on with this one, you're going to get a constant 60 FPS. I haven't seen it drop below. We're somewhere in the range between 70 and 100 FPS, depending on what's going on. I don't normally play this game. I actually bought it just for testing, and I know these guys get so mad at me because I just run around the map. I usually knock the ball in our own goal. And for my final PC game test here, will it run Crisis? Now this is Crisis 1. For some reason I can never get the sound working on certain systems, even on my main gaming machine. I know this is an older game and it has something to do with it. I've just always run into this issue with no sound. This is a mix of low and medium settings at 720p. You should have a really good experience playing Crisis on the GPD Win 2. And before we get out of here, I just want to show you a little bit of PS2 emulation. Now, I have more emulator videos coming. If you're watching this later on down the road, check the description down below because I'm going to be testing pretty much everything. This is PC SX2 version 1.5. We're at 2x resolution. So far... I am very impressed with the GPD Win 2. Now, could you build a better gaming machine for the same price? Yes, you could. Of course you could. You could build an awesome gaming machine for half the price. If you go use parts, you could probably build something that will outperform this for a quarter of the price, but it won't be portable, and that's the main draw here. I will be doing some more testing. Expect a few more videos this week. I want to test out some more emulators here and there. If you guys have any requests for more PC games running on the GPD Win 2, let me know in the comments below. Even though I really enjoy this device, it's actually one of the coolest devices I've ever got my hands on, I still think it's overpriced for what you're getting here. So I'm not into laptops whatsoever, but I do own one Dell Inspiron with an i5 and a 1050 Ti in it. I purchased it from my local Best Buy. It was on sale for $599, 600 bucks, and it will walk all over this unit here. But it's not as portable as the GPD Win 2. This will fit in my back pocket. I can pretty much carry it anywhere I want to, and it plays everything I need. Older Valve titles are going to run at full speed. As you saw, we can get GTA 5 to run at 30 FPS, and I think we can do even better than that, so watch out for a video. Bottom line here, awesome device, little overpriced, you can get better performance for less money. If you've been saving up to buy your first laptop or your first desktop for gaming, don't even look at the GPD Win 2. I would not want this to be my primary computer. If you already have an established gaming PC or a nice laptop and you've been looking for a secondary handheld device, the GPD Win 2 is perfect for you. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you want to check these out, I'm going to leave Amazon links in the description. Keep an eye on the channel because I got a lot more coming on this thing. And like always, thanks for watching.